Welcome to the brief summary of the Living Community Challenge. At the International Living Future Institute, we are working towards socially just, culturally rich, and ecologically restorative communities. We do this through a variety of programs and initiatives. You may be familiar with some of our tools, such as Declare, Reveal, and Just, or our flagship program, the Living Building Challenge. Today, we're going to talk about the Living Community Challenge. The Living Community Challenge is focused on regenerative or positive impact in a world of codes, green building, high performance that focuses on incremental um, impact of reducing negative environmental impacts. We prefer to start from the premise of what is positive impact, what's gener regenerative, and what does good look like? We use the metaphor of nature quite a bit. You might be familiar with the living building challenge that uses the metaphor of the flower. We use the metaphor of the forest for the living community challenge because it's less about the individual building or organism and more about the ecosystem or the community. It's still rooted in place. It has to be adapted to its specific climate and site. Living communities, like a forest, harvest all of their own energy and have closed-looped water cycles. Waste is seen as a resource. When a leaf falls in a forest, it's seen as a nutrient. Forests are symbiotic, just like communities. Diversity is a strength. And of course, beauty is an integral por part of a forest as well as living communities. The Living Community Challenge is really a tool to focus the vision of a particular community, and it can work well with a variety of other frameworks and protocols for engagement and the process of creating a living community. The challenge was developed specifically to create a new model of community building, urban design, and how we're reinventing cities and campuses, such as this image here from our Living Cities competition in 2011. We took these principles of the Living Community Challenge and applied them recently to Seattle's First Hill and adjacent neighborhoods. You can download a report uh, to find this rendering as well as um, a variety of other information on how do you transform an existing community like the photo in the lower right hand corner, to something more holistic in using the principles of a living community that prioritizes uh, pedestrian mobility, uh, more biophilic spaces, and turning the filtering and slowing down of stormwater into an amenity. So diving into the Living Community Challenge, it was launched in 2014, and as of June, 2017, we have launched the version 1.2. Performance areas or petals, using the metaphor of the flower from the Living Building Challenge, are the same in the Living Community Challenge and the Living Building Challenge. There's still seven petals, place, water, energy, health and happiness, materials, equity, and beauty. If you're familiar with the Living Building Challenge, we still have 20 imperatives. The ones that are underlined here, healthy neighborhood design, resilient community connections, living materials plan, and universal access to community services are specific to the Living Community Challenge. The other 16 imperatives have the same title as the Living Building Challenge. They've just been tailored to the community scale. The Living Community Challenge has three pathways to certification, all based on actual performance. Uh, zero energy certification is available, pedal certification for three or more pedals, one of which must be materials, water, or energy, and Living Community Challenge certification is available for communities that meet all 20 imperatives, all seven pedals. 
The process is slightly different for living communities compared to the Living Building Challenge. Registration is similar and the certification based on actual performance is similar, but planning and implementation have been added given the time frame to create communities. Expanding on that a bit under phase two for planning, there is a compliance review for a vision and master plan. Now these can actually be pulled out into separate steps or reviews that may have a year or two between them, or they can be combined together. Step three, implementation. When communities move from their master plan compliance and actually start construction, they can apply for emerging living community status. There's more information on this process within our handbook that we'll talk about a little bit later. So when does a living building become a living community challenge project? So the LCC criteria are fairly simple. You need a diversity of uses, multiple buildings, at least two or more, and at least one multimodal street, that public realm. Not required, but generally an indicator that you've scaled up to become a living community challenge project is shared infrastructure, district energy, for example. So if you look at the basic living community challenge layout, imagine a new neighborhood that's being created. And the city is actually going to be developing a new library, a new community center, a new city hall, city park, the sites that are shown here as shaded, community-owned development. We often get the question of, does every building within the community need to be a living building? And the answer is no. The requirements of the Living Community Challenge say that 50% or more of the community-owned development uh, must also apply for Living Building Challenge certification. The Living Community Challenge applies to new master plans as well as existing neighborhoods, and there's a real variety of communities using the program. This can be from municipal comprehensive planning efforts or neighborhood plan efforts, obviously major gray and brownfield uh, redevelopment can be applied to use the Living Community Challenge standard, uh, university campuses and even uh, eco-villages. Teams are choosing to pursue the Living Community Challenge for a variety of reasons. Uh, communities have existing livability and resiliency goals. Because the standard is focused on people and creating biophilic environments and that connection to nature that we know attracts talent and is an amenity to the community members is really appealing to teams. Uh, the focus on equity, and we have tools at the Institute, whether they be the equity drafting table or the just organization label, we can help communities achieve their equity goals. And of course, climate commitments have a great synergy with the Living Community Challenge and in particular, uh, our net positive energy requirement. As of June 2017, we have eight registered projects. You can see a sampling of them here, two are confidential, and more than 50 projects exploring the Living Community Challenge standard. And you can download the standard for free along with the handbook from our webpage here. The standard includes the requirements of the 20 imperatives and the handbook details more of the process and how to use the standard. We really recommend downloading them both and using them as companion resources. The Living Community Challenge is really a call to action, and we hope that you'll contact us and explore our resources on our webpage if you'd like additional information.